Films in Focus with David Sterrett is underwritten by The Movie House, your destination for first-run Hollywood and independent movies, and a digital portal to the Met Opera, National Theater Live, and special events worldwide in Millerton, New York, and on the web, themoviehouse.net. David Sterrett is the editor-in-chief of the Quarterly Review of Film and Video, contributing writer at Cineast, film professor at the Maryland Institute College of Art, Robin Hood Radio's very own critic. He joins us weekly, the film's Wild Nights with Emily, Nonfiction, and Book Smart. So easy. This one is so easy. I won't even try. Hi, David. How are you? Uh, I'm okay, Joe. How are you doing this week? This is uh, all right. I cannot complain. Confused, but dazed and confused. You know what? We should speak to each other going forward in film titles. What a good idea. That would be a, a true challenge for us. I know that you like to make sentences out of our film titles for the week, and this week's might be a little bit of a challenge, actually, but... Piece of cake. They actually have something in common, these three films, which is that in one way or another, they each deal with books, with literature, uh, with that kind of thing, but in very, very different ways, and sometimes more directly than others. In any case, I'd like to start with Wild Nights with Emily, which is a movie about Emily Dickinson. Uh, That is the Emily who is referred to in the title, or she is the Emily. Uh, This is a movie written and directed by a pretty new filmmaker named Madeline Alnick. And uh, it is about Emily Dickinson. And it is, of all things, a comedy about Emily Dickinson. About three years ago, the very fine English filmmaker Terrence Davis came out with a lovely movie about Emily Dickinson called A Quiet Passion. And anyone who is even remotely interested in poetry or American literature should definitely see it, A Quiet Passion because it's just a lovely movie about uh, Emily Dickinson, treats her with great respect, it kind of delves into her life and writing. Uh, Wild Nights with Emily is a very, very, very different kind of a movie uh, because it is really a comedy of all things about Emily Dickinson. And it is a comedy which posits the possibility that Emily, in fact, in the movie, is not just a possibility that Emily Dickinson was actually something of a lesbian. Now, Emily Dickinson is famous for having been a person with not any particular known sex life. A couple of things she apparently in her real actual life didn't manage very well were, one, having any kind of a real genuine love life, and number two, getting her stuff published. So uh, Wild Nights with Emily takes very different approaches to both of those things. And I will focus on the uh, the love life angle because that's really what the movie focuses on. And what we have here is uh, a movie which suggests that Emily Dickinson uh, was having uh, a pretty long time affair with her sister-in-law, a woman named Susan, uh, and that uh, Emily Dickinson was writing her poetry and having, you know, her occasional flings with Susan and, you know, engaging in certain other activities in her life. And all of this is treated in really quite a comic way. So the movie takes place in the 19th century. So right away, there's a bit of a comic clash there because we have this very sort of modern story about these two women every once in a while jumping into each other's arms set way back in the 19th century, which we think of, I suppose, as being sort of a time of great politesse uh, and, uh, and, and, and tact and restraint. Uh, But the movie takes place, uh, some of it actually focuses on uh, Emily Dickinson and her sister-in-law, Susan, uh, back in the, like, the earlier part, around around 1840, uh, when they are played by different actresses. And then the main part of the story takes place around 1860. And then we have part of the story taking place after that, after Emily Dickinson has died, where her editor uh, is a woman named Mabel, is, uh, is lecturing about her to a hall. And Mabel is more or less the narrator of this film and kind of guides us through this film, which is set in these three different uh, time periods all around the middle part of the 19th century. Uh, So, uh, again, the movie is a comedy, and it it, it treats the characters in kind of this almost sort of a flippant way. They're played in very, very modern style by the three main actresses, Molly Shannon, who plays the the adult Emily Dickinson, uh, Susan Ziegler, who plays the adult Susan, her sister-in-law, with whom she is romantically entangled, uh, and Amy Simons plays uh, plays Mabel, the editor, who is also kind of narrating the movie for 
for us. Uh, all three play their, their roles in, in basically comic ways, very modern style of playing, a uh, very modern style of, of, of a lot of flippancy, a lot of irony uh, in their line deliveries and the way they speak and the way they behave and so forth. And some people will find this, uh, you know, not very much to their taste. I found the whole thing just sort of amusing as a sort of a romp. This is in no way a definitive movie about Emily Dickinson. Doesn't want to be, doesn't claim to be. Uh, but if you want to sort of have a uh, an offbeat, off-kilter sort of a romp about uh, one of the, the greatest poets who ever lived, in my opinion, Emily Dickinson. Uh, and the movie does give you, you know, th then you will like this movie if, if you can sort of take that. Also, the movie presents some of her poetry uh, and when the poetry is read by somebody on the screen, we have it in subtitles below, which I always find very helpful to be able to look at poetry at the same time as I'm hearing it, uh, if I'm going to be hearing it at all. And it's, uh, you know, that's a nice approach. So the movie does have a lot of respect for Dickinson's poetry at the same time that it has a lot of fun uh, with the idea of her private life being a whole lot more complicated than maybe we ever thought it was. So I liked em uh, Wild Nights with Emily. I wasn't crazy about it, but it's an amusing little film. And again, if you have any interest in uh, in poetry or in American literature, or for that matter, in today's uh, kind of trends in comic movies, then you'll probably enjoy Wild, Life, Wild Nights with Emily. Next film, nonfiction, is our one overseas movie for the day because it is a French movie written and directed by the very great French filmmaker Olivier Assayas, and it's called nonfiction because it is about uh, some some. It's about fiction and it's about nonfiction and it's about mainly the changes that are taking place in literature nowadays because of technology. So the main characters of this movie, really the main character, uh, is a guy named Alain played by the very fine actor Guillaume Canet, uh, and he runs a publishing house in Paris. Uh, the publishing house is owned by somebody else who is now thinking about selling it, but it's a very, very, it's a very high-level publishing house, very successful, and it has a whole lot of prestige, uh, but now it is being kind of undermined a little bit by the change over to digital uh, publishing, because this is a very, it's been around for a hundred years, we find out during the movie, this publishing house, and now all these changes take place in the publishing world. So that is really our main character, uh, the head of this publishing house. His wife, on the other hand, is an actress, a very well-known one who acts in movies, and she is currently acting in a TV series where she plays a cop, although they like to call her a crisis resolution manager. Uh, and she is involved, obviously, being a television actress very much in the current, you know, today's media, 20th and 21st century media, uh, and yet she is married to the guy who runs this old publishing house. Then they have a couple of friends, uh, a guy who is a writer, uh, and he is sort of an old-fashioned novelist who writes his novels, uh, you know, uh, in the old-fashioned way, not the digital way, and, and, and he is about to be dropped by his good friend who runs this publishing house. And one of the first scenes in the movie is about the uh, the head of the publishing house having a hard time giving his good friend the, the, the news that they are not planning to publish his new novel because it's sort of too much like his old one. And yet at the same time, it's a little bit too different to really make them, them, them comfortable. Uh, and then we have his wife, the novelist's wife, uh, who is a political consultant. And so she's involved in a whole other area of using words. She's always sort of running around doing things on behalf of her candidate who she works with. And then there is a third couple uh, who is also involved here, which is a woman who is running the transition of the publishing house into the new digital age. And then, uh, and she is actually having an affair with the guy who uh, who runs the publishing house. Uh, and then uh, there, well, there are some other characters away around as well. In any case, all these people, in one way or another, are involved with words. Are involved with words both on paper, with words as they are spoken and 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 sort of used in the media world, particularly with the political consultant, and then with the whole idea of publishing transitioning from the old ink and paper model into the new digital model. And uh, 
there's a whole lot of talk about this. And in fact, this is one of the rare movies, nonfiction, which I would describe as chatty because people are constantly, constantly, constantly talking in this movie. So if anything, this movie is really about conversation, about words which are neither digital nor print, but which are people talking to each other. And there is a really a lot of conversation about the very serious topic of what is happening to the world of books, to the world of literature, uh, as uh, – the world of books and literature trans transition from the old fashioned sort of models uh, into the new models of, of the digital age. And there's especially a lot of talk about whether uh, are things all being democratized? Is it now everybody has access to, uh, to the digital media in a way everybody did not have access to publishing houses in the past, but is this a good thing or a bad thing? Is it just crowding up the, the, the sphere of words uh, and public words, or is it actually a wonderful thing because it is making so, much, so many more ways of getting your words out there available to so many people. The movie's wordiness, since it's a French film, will remind a whole lot of people, such as me, of the very great French filmmaker Eric Romer from a previous stage of movie making. Uh, and the movie's been compared with Woody Allen movies because people sit around and they talk about things that really count. And a lot of the talk is uh, sort of a, a, a whimsical and, and, and people having fun with words. In any case, nonfiction is really a very literate movie for people who want to see a very literate movie. But it's a funny movie. It's an entertaining movie. And it's very much a romantic movie. It's all about people who are having flings and romances and marriages that aren't exactly solid. And in that sense, it's very much like an old-fashioned Eric Romer movie. So I don't think that nonfiction ranks with Olivier Isaias' very greatest work, but it's a lot of fun to look at. And if you're interested, again, in the worlds of literature and fiction and want a sort of a chatty, amusing approach to that, then nonfiction is the movie for you. Each one of the films I'm talking about today, Jill, are comedies in one way or another. And the one which is an out and out comedy is the third one I want to talk about a bit, which is called Booksmart, uh, which is directed by Olivia Wilde. And by the way, all three of these movies have very strong female characters. So that's always a wonderful thing to see uh, in the world of movies. And uh, Booksmart is very much a Hollywood movie. And it is very much a movie about uh, well, it's about intelligence and about students, high school students. This is a movie that falls into that little subgenre of the Graduation Eve movie, uh, sort of like uh, American Graffiti, to go back a really long way. And the main characters are a couple of kids who are just about to graduate from high school, uh, Amy and Molly, played by Caitlin Deaver and Beanie Feldstein. And they are just about to graduate, and they are really smart, uh, especially Molly, who's the valedictorian of the class. Uh, and they're, they're just about to, to graduate, and you know, with honors and the whole business, they are very distinguished young students. And they suddenly realize on the eve of graduation, they are literally graduating the next day, that there's something they forgot to do throughout all of their years of high school, and that was to have fun. They thought that they were so superior to the other kids who were partying all the time. And then they discover on the eve of graduation that the other kids in their class, the other kids who they're really, you know, who are sort of their peers in the class, are also going off to excellent colleges right after they graduate, but who also partied all the time. And Amy and Molly suddenly realize, my gosh, they're really superior to us because they're also graduating really high in the class and they're also going off to really excellent colleges, but they partied during their high school years. We forgot to party. So they decide they have one night left the night before graduation to go out and party. And they happen to know that there is a big party which is taking place. All they have to do is go to that party and they can then fill in that gap in their high school years, but they don't know where the party is taking place. They don't have the address. They don't know the location. So the whole first part of the film deals with they're trying to find the party and they end up at another party or two and then they finally do find the party and then we watch see what comes out of all of that. Uh, the logistics of Booksmart don't really make any sense. Way too much happens in one overcrowded evening uh, that, that, that could really happen. But hey, this is not just a comedy. It's really a farce. And so things like logistics really don't matter very much. There's a whole lot of very amusing characters, as we might expect 
from a high school comedy set in this day and age. The genders are very, very fluid and the sexuality is very, very open and all kinds of crazy things happen along the way. Uh, but I found it all very, very, very funny and amusing. Booksmart has been getting ecstatic reviews from critics. I didn't find it as much uh, as, as, as totally uproariously hilarious as a lot of my critical colleagues did. Then again, this movie isn't really aimed at my demographic. I'm an old guy, and this is really a movie made primarily for young people, especially very young people, sort of around high school and college age. Then again, for a movie which is really not aimed at my demographic, I really did have a good time watching it. It's got a few very, very funny things in it. And the mood overall is very light and charming and sort of bubbling. Also, some terrific secondary performances by people like Jason Sudeikis and especially Lisa Kudrow, who has not been on the, uh, on, the, on, on the big screen all that often lately. So it was fun watching them. But mainly, I really enjoyed the central performances uh, by Beanie Feldstein and Caitlin Deaver. And I just enjoyed the overall look and feel of the movie. It's bouncy, it's fun, it's bubbly, and it's very enjoyable even for an old guy like me. So three movies this week, Jill, all about uh, kind of about books and literature and very much about words. I had a good time at all three of them. And so that is my upbeat story this week. And I just love it when you are bouncy and bubbly. David <laughs> Sterrett, Films in Focus, the films Wild Nights with Emily, Nonfiction, and Booksmart. Booksmart.